Greetings and welcome to part two of the three part series. Uh, the first one we looked at was how to find activities to um, engage our students. We looked at different ways to search by standards, by topics, or Lexile, and do all of those things. So if you haven't checked that one out, make sure you go back and you watch that one again. All right, so today in this section, in part two, we're going to be looking at some of the great activities in Active Classroom, and I'm going to make recommendations by subject area. So we're going to kind of go through and take a look at some of these uh, different activities. So if you're looking for a way to, you know, search for activities and how to navigate the program, this is not the video for you. Um, the video for that we're doing right now is on um, just recommendations and good suggestions for different types of activities and kind of telling you about the different series and the different groupings of uh, different collections that you'll find in Active Classroom, because as you may have Remember from the first video, I talked about how Active Classroom has over 4,000 different activities. And so how do you kind of narrow it down? How do you find um, things that you want to use with your, your students? So I will point you towards uh, this question mark button again. I know I talked about that in the previous video. Uh, but down here towards the bottom, it does have all the little uh, tutorials and things like that there is a description page on the different series in Active Classroom. And so you can read a brief synopsis of what each series is about. Um, so if you wanna do that, please feel free to go check that out. Um, it's under the question mark button down towards the bottom, it says um, series. You'll notice that embedded in a lot of these, there are webinars. Um, so we've done a great job of really trying to go in depth with some of these series um, and offering and inviting teachers to come participate with us in live webinars and then we record them and upload them much like this one that you're watching here. Um, and so, but they focus on the individual series themselves. Not every single one has one of those, but I did want to kind of direct your attention to that. All right, so I'm going to hop back out, go back to the main page and we'll get started. I'm going to walk you through um, some series that I think are really, really great. Um, we'll just go by subject area. So let's start off with, uh, let's go with economics. And I'm going to talk about a couple of these um, different things here. So when I sort just to economics, it'll pull up just the series titles related to economics. You can see there are some of the backwards planning PowerPoints. Um, there are some good ones in here for um, your economics course. Um, there's there's one in particular that it focuses on um, near the 1920s and the uh, the economic crash and the Great Depression of the 20s. So it's great to to tie in with an economics course to bring in some of that background information. Uh, we have several different great reading series. You will see there we've got the um, basic economics concepts and issues. So that is a good one to check out. Uh, basic money management. This is more for like personal finance and getting into, you know, managing you know, managing your own personal um, personal finance, just like I stated there. Uh, there are some good ones here for under current events. Uh, current events. This is a series that is constantly being updated, so you'll find new lessons just dropping in here. You know, every couple of weeks or so, you'll find new ones. Whenever there's a hot topic in the news, something that um, that's really gripping that ties into the social studies well, we tend to launch um, new activities for that. So be sure to check that one pretty regularly. Um, economics at Work, this is another really good series here. So let's take a look at this Economics at Work. This is a collection of videos, and these videos are broken apart into um, smaller segments. They've got, you know, they're anywhere from five to seven or eight, min <clears throat> seven or eight minutes with those. All right, scrolling down. Um, going to Everyday Life. Everyday is a Life is a great collection of readings. You will find a bunch of Everyday Life. Um, this is an awesome series for not only economics, but there are a lot of great readings in there for U.S. history, world history, and especially if you are doing geography from a conceptual lens. I really like the Everyday Life readings because they take they they kind of focus on a concept and that concept reviewed during different time periods. So it's not so chronological, like if you're trying to find something for US history and you wanna read just about one time period, the everyday life, you can break out a piece of that. And I showed you guys how to do that, or I'll show you guys how to do that in the, the third video that I have in here, which is um, applying Active Classroom and assigning things out to your students. So you can go check that out and it shows you how to break those segments out. But for everyday life, it's great because they're, they're conceptual and it usually visits a couple of different 
points on a timeline um, looking at that concept and how it played out during that time period. Um, focus on world history. There's some good things that tie in for economics there as well. The Framework for Democracy videos, again, another collection of great videos. This Fundamentals of Economics, I think this is my favorite um, economics reading series in here. Uh, these, these tie in a lot of the um, like current events, and, well, not current events necessarily, but more modern times. So there's a great reading in there on um, the housing crash or the subprime market of 2008. And so there's a lot more, uh, more, more modern things. I think that one has a copyright date of like 2016 or 2017 or 2015, somewhere in there. Um, high school economics is another great one. Um, a little bit higher level readings. Um, then you've got things like the history unfolding, which are uh, primary source activities for for finding some things. There's one on mapping in the news, personal finance. If you're looking for a full personal financial literacy course, this would be a great one to go to, and you can kind of follow that in order. Um, I really like this guy that, that does these videos. Uh, they're, they're readings and videos and activities that go along with it. So you've got this one here, like on delayed gratification. And so it talks with the kids about, you know, the importance of uh, or the the uh, eighth wonder of the world, um, which is at, um, I'm totally drawing a blank on what I was trying to say. With growth of money over time, let's see, it probably says it right here in the beginning. Um, but so there are videos followed by, um, the guy's kind of cheesy, kind of corny, that's why I like him. Uh, but the activities and then also students having to do things like looking at opportunity costs. And this just talks about delayed gratification. Compounding interest. That's what I was trying to figure out. Yes, he didn't even say it, but I remembered it right before he said it. Uh, compound interest being the eighth wonder of the world, right? So um, this is a great series right here on uh, for personal finance. And you can see the way that these are laid out. Um, you could really follow this right along for a course. It won't take you a full year, but it does get you through a few weeks of uh, personal finance. And obviously there's some ability or there's some there's some adaption in there too to where you can really modify it and extend the lesson beyond um, just what's in that video there. All right, so now if we go back to the series, I just wanna highlight a couple more things for that. Um, Project-based economics, okay. So this is an awesome series. These are pretty massive though. Um, they're really intended to be a simulation that's done over a, a period of time, not just one class period, um, but these are like actual like practical economics at work where the students are going to be um, really looking at real life scenarios. Uh, there's a, this one here, the greater good. I think that one's like, or the, the not in my backyard one, which is on like a, uh, nuclear power plants and having them in your backyard, the invisible hand, uh, the high school food court. There's a lot of really, really good ones in here for economics and they are simulations where the kids are going to have roles and they're going to have to really um, do some problem solving and do some decision making and just it's, it's real life application of economics. And I think they're they're phenomenal. So definitely check out this project based economics. There's a teacher's guide. The teacher's guide is pretty massive. Um, you'll want to find just the section that you're wanting to look at because it, it does have a lot of additional support and material. If you've never done a simulation in your classroom, it gives you a really in-depth approach on how to do that. Um, the Regional Government and Economics, that's a great series of readings. It, it takes you through looking at different countries, economies, and uh, governments as well. Uh, the Story Path has another great simulation. The Smart Songs are some good. Uh, these are rap videos. Uh, a lot of them kind of tie more towards government, but there are definitely some good ones for um, economics as well. Uh, Story Path, I already mentioned, Turning Points, Unfinished Nation, and some U.S. History Readers. So there's a lot of different uh, series that you can kind of connect with. So if I close that out and we go back and let's look at another series now. So let's look at global studies and geography. This would be like a world cultures classroom, an Eastern or Western hemisphere um, course or uh, a high school geography. So you'll see that it does change up quite a bit with the series titles. You see there's some atlas activities. There are some U.S. history lessons that are really tie in well with uh, geography and world cultures. And there's also um, 
There are also some from world history that tie in really well with that too. And of course, some great backwards planning PowerPoints. If you're giving some historical context as you're studying different parts of the world, that would be a great thing to pull in. Um, the cultural conflicts. These are phenomenal for uh, geography or world cultures classroom. There, there are simulations where the students are given a scenario. And I will tell you guys to look in the teacher's guide of those cultural conflicts because there's a reading piece that usually accompanies those um, that you can print out or you can paste onto your you know, Schoology or Canvas page or uh, Hub page or whatever. <clears throat> but there is a great reading that accompanies that. And it's a scenario where the kids have to act out roles. It's not scripted. Um, the students actually have to figure out how that character would play in a scenario. Some examples would be like the India caste system. There's another great one on uh, Zimbabwe looking at um, tribalism versus nationalism as Zimbabwe becomes its own nation, uh, breaking free um, from its its colonial ties. Um, so there's, there's a lot of really neat um, simulations in there with that. Obviously, the current events is a fantastic one for geography. Um, the debating the documents, I highly recommend this one, the desk atlas. Um, I either recommend this one or the world atlas, which is not showing on this page because I've got to scroll way down. But the desk atlas or the world atlas, that gives you an opportunity to differentiate for your students. Um, the desk atlas is a little bit higher level. The world atlas is, is lower level. Um, so just something great there for you. Um, everyday life, as I mentioned earlier, and let's just take a look at, at these ones here. These everyday life readings, again, they're more uh, conceptual in nature. And so it looks like there's just a couple that are found in this license. But um, the way that they're laid out, it's usually looking at something over uh, the course of time. This one in particular does not go into that quite as much as I was expecting. But um, these are definitely really good readings to check out with your students. All right, I'm gonna go back over here. Sorry, I've gotta move this go-to meeting thing here around that I'm recording on. And we're gonna to go to a different one. So let's look here. Um, some other really good ones that I wanna direct you towards would be things like how to analyze maps and atlases, uh, human geography, making sense of planet Earth, uh, human, or I'm sorry, not human. Human geography is good, but Hungry Planet. This one is phenomenal, and I have a lot of teachers that just rave about this. This one is getting a little bit of a facelift uh, this summer. They're going to be updating some of the images and some of the the statistics and things like that. Unfortunately, I heard that I'm going to be losing my favorite little um, stubborn teenager right here, and so you can see there he is pouting, with his arms crossed. Um, but the students, what they do is they actually investigate uh, different cultures based on what the family eats during the course of a week. And so those authors just did a really fantastic job with um, with kind of analyzing culture from that lens and from that aspect. Um, so some other ones that I do want to highlight for you, um, besides Hungry Planet, would be Issues Today is a phenomenal one learning about the Middle East, mapping our world. If you guys got the upgraded version of Active Classroom that has the um, the Maps tab on your front screen, then you are in for such a treat. I absolutely, this is my new favorite one, the Mapping Our World Lessons. These are all hands-on activities where the students are going to be working online, but they're going to be creating thematic maps. And the lessons are so well written. They are step-by-step -step instructions for your student. So they have to actually read the instructions and follow step-by-step, -step, and they create a map a thematic map and it's not just okay let's label the countries and and the the capitals no it's it's actually like meaningful map creating like they might be looking at the distribution of volcanoes in central america and looking at how volcanoes uh help shape the earth and then how the volcanoes interact with humans in the environment um just really really good lessons so check those out the mapping in the news, that's also brand new. There's only three in there right now, but that's one that's constantly growing and changing. So probably by the time you watch this video, there could even uh, be a new one in there. So check these out for yourself. Go and explore that way. Um, some other really good ones, the, the Power Basics. 
there are some really good readings on each one of the regions and the countries in there. So those are phenomenal. The regional geography themes, the regional government economics, those are those are just solid um, activities in there as well. Travels with music, if you're looking for something a little bit different. Um, I, I forgot to mention up there, the material world is similar to Hungry Planet in that it's analyzing families and cultures around the world, but it takes a different approach. It looks at what people own. So their physical items that they actually own in their homes. Um, it's, it's really fascinating as well. It's very much inquiry based. Uh, the travels with music. This is just a really neat one that they look at different instruments around the world, and and the the musicians talk about um, the influence of those instruments and the culture, and you know maybe the religion that it might tie in with or something like that. So those are those are neat, um, and those can be broken up into smaller segments as well if you don't want to spend you know an entire day looking at the sitar or something like that. Instead, you're just wanting to introduce some some aspect of Indian culture and Hinduism or something like that. Um, what I Eat, that is another one from those same authors that did Hungry Planet and Material World. Um, that one's looking at individuals and it takes a little bit uh, more different approach. The What's Going On videos, these are really cool. They are done in conjunction with uh, the UN, the United Nations, um, and they're, they deal with some very sensitive topics. So be careful. You may want to gauge, watch the video yourself first and determine if your students are mature enough to handle the topics that are in there um, because they're heart wrenching. Like some of them are just really, really sad. Um, the, the landmines in Cambodia, uh, poverty in Brazil. I mean, there's just some real heart wrenching videos. So you may want to check, watch the videos first and determine if your kids are mature enough for that series or not. The wonders of world cultures. These are super cool. I, I'm a big fan of like the unexplained types of things like the, the ancient pyramids, the, the big stones faces on Easter Island. Um, you've got all of those, the, the temples of Angkor. Um, all of those things are in there. There's the world atlas. And then, of course, the zombie based geography. I'm just going to hop over to that. Zombie based geography is 10 different units. And um, it has everything from looking at natural resources and environments, looking at the first one deals with um, different jobs that geographers have. So getting kids to understand, um, you know, what jobs are out there. It talks about human impact on the environment, um, natural resources for survival. It looks at population densities, different things like that. This one talks about migration patterns. So it goes into looking at migration there is a graphic novel or a comic book that the kids can download and it goes along with it. And you'll notice each unit, each of the 10 units is divided into multiple lessons. Now these lessons may not be super long. Like this lesson right here might only take you 15, 20 minutes to work through. Um, it gives them a PDF that they can download and complete to turn in for their assignment. So um, those are all right there at your fingertips. So check those out. Um, I'm going to close this one here, close that one, go back here. So those are some good ones for geography. And now I'm going to go on and I'm going to talk about um, government and civics. And I will tell you that government and civics, the big one that I want to kind of guide you towards, there, there are a bunch of really good ones in here for government and civics. There's a project-based government that's similar to that one that I talked about earlier for economics. That one is really good. But then the big one I'm going to tell you about is the We the People. Um, we the People is we have all four levels of We the People. And so we have a we have a level that goes all the way down to like third grade. Then we have a fifth grade one, then an eighth grade, eleventh grade, or and then, then a senior, I mean a senior level one. So you have all four levels. So if you need to differentiate for your students, you need to, you know, maybe you have some seniors that, that still struggle with reading, you can assign them different levels of those readings. So those are phenomenal. Um, check that out. It's the full updated text. I think it was just updated here in the last year or so. Um, this video is being created in 2020 during the, uh, the shutdown. So that's what, uh, and if you happen to be watching this and you're far ahead in, in the future, we um, were all locked in our homes due to the coronavirus, essentially. Not, not really locked in our homes. That's a little bit excessive. But anyways, um, sorry, I bird walked again. Um, going back to this, so you've got the government activators. I highly recommend you check those out. Those are those are probably my number one favorite for um, government classes. I, I was involved, my, my teacher, when I was a senior in high school, my government teacher did a phenomenal job 
giving us a scenario on a, um, it was a court case and we had all different roles to play. And that was the one thing I remember from high school, the thing that stuck with me the most. I even remember all of the work that I did. And I was a, I was a pretty solid, um, underachieving student, <laughs> to be honest with you. I was pretty bored in high school most of the time. But when I was given things like this, like these types of scenarios, I rose well above what my government teacher expected. At the end of it, and this was towards the end of the year, he actually looked at me and said, um, why didn't I see this out of you all year? And I said, because you didn't challenge me all year on one of those types of things. So you probably have students much like that. I highly recommend checking out these government activators. These are simulations. And so um, we have all different kinds of topics, like looking at personal rights, procedural rights, um, federalism, the judicial branch, the legislative branch, public opinion, and the media. Um, there's just a lot of really good topics, special interest groups, a lot of really good things you can use for that. So government activators, check those out. All right, um, I'm gonna skip over psychology and sociology, and there's a reason for that. And I'll just tell you straight up, the psychology and sociology, um, there are actual courses that are built for everyone that buys a high school license of active classroom. It's already laid out for you. So it's, it's laid out for you for the entire year. There are a variety of activity types in there, and you can go check those out, but it's because it's already laid out for you, you really don't need to dig around through here so much. Um, Texas Studies, if you happen to be in uh, Texas and you're listening to this, there is a Texas history program in here. There are two different levels of reading, so if you need to differentiate for your kids, those are great, as well as some interactive mapping activities and some great decision-making activities, which I'll talk about more here in a minute. So now I'm gonna loop together um, US history and world history for just a minute, and I'm just gonna open up the full series titles and we're gonna look at this together. And I'm gonna highlight because there are a lot of things that you can use in both US history and world history, series that have some branching that kind of tie into both. So I'm just gonna read through these real quickly. The acting history plays, those are great scripted, short. There's only about 18 or 19 in there. If you're teaching the first half of US history, you've got the African-American heroes of the Civil War, some great readings, um, then, Again, I guess I should start with, Ameri with U.S. history. These American history activators, very close to what I just talked about with the government activators, they are phenomenal simulations. Check those out. You'll like those a lot. Um, the Atlas of U.S. history and the Atlas of world history. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to open up world history for a minute. And what I want you guys to notice is that there are two levels of these activities. There's a level one and a level two. So I see this one here on Phoenician trade for level one and Phoenician trade level two. Let's take a look at what the difference is. Um, so right here, we can see we've got a, um, a chart and then we've got a map that we're gonna look at. And you'll notice that the questions down below are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The kids are gonna have to read the map and they're gonna have to answer those questions. So that's a level one. It's not real high level types of questions, but um, they are there for you to kind of like build some new learning or something like that. Whereas if we compare that then with the level two activity, let me get back over there to level two. So the level two is usually gonna have a little bit more rigor and a little bit more depth of knowledge and progression in this one. This one only does have two. This is a really short one. I've selected a bad one for this example. Many of these have like six or seven different pages of these activities here. This one's just short, two pages, but you'll notice it has the uh, the text over here on the left. The students read the passage and they answer the true and false questions. And then this one here, they're having to look at that chart so they can take that full screen. They look at the chart and they compare it with the map. And then they have to use both the map and the chart to determine which statements are true and false from that. So um, usually some, some pretty good um, differentiation with those and definitely some some changing in, uh, you know, looking at different depth of knowledge with those. So those are the level two versus the level one. U.S. History Atlas is laid out the same way, so just be aware of that. All right, um, going down through backwards planning PowerPoints, this is where they really shine, is in U.S. History and World History. There are um, some really good, uh, like, projects that go along with it. There's a quiz that goes along with each one of those. So check those out. And then if you're looking for a textbook for world history, this big eras of world history is a good one. 
Um, it it kind of follows the nine big eras in world history and their readings. The very next one I'm going to hop onto is this C3 inquiry. There are some awesome ones for U.S. history, world history, and Texas history, as well as um, I think at least one that you can use in a, a geography classroom. Um, so, so definitely check those out. They are really rigorous and they are really, really good lessons. It's all student centered. Um, you kind of set up your classroom like jigsaw method where you're putting students in groups and you're moving the groups around. You're switching up their order and then they all come back together with their new ideas and they share them back together. Real intense um, activity, but you can break it into smaller chunks if you want to do that. They are really high level and they will really challenge your students. And what's good about them is when you challenge your students, you're still putting all the lifting on them. And they really don't have like a cop out. They can't just circle C or write, you know, true or false on there. They actually have to think about what they're looking at. Um, cases and controversies, those are great. Um, they, they look at some of like the big Supreme Court cases or big um, controversial events in history and some primary sources that accompany those. Uh, the Colonial Williamsburg are obviously phenomenal. The Colonial Williamsburg Education Foundation did a fantastic job with those. Um, the close reading exercises, that's going to go with something else I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. Um, obviously, some current events are good for U.S. history classes, and I think there's even some ties for some world history connections in that. Debating the documents, um, you'll see that featured. Um, I'm probably going to feature that in the next video, but these debating the documents are really good for um, – Right here, looking at primary source documents, it's got multiple level, levels and layers to it. So there's a, a secondary source followed by a secondary source timeline, followed by some visual primary source documents right here that the students are going to go in and analyze. And so the questions are written really well to get the kids to really think about what they're looking at. Uh, notice here it's got main idea and topic, context, visual features, and even going in to looking at recognizing bias, which is a critical skill that your social studies students need. Um, it does have additional layers to it. Um, really, the students are going to be writing argumentatively, and it's just a good, challenging type of activity, but you can break it into chunks, and it does it does give you kind of a, a way to a pathway to having some good solid debates in your classroom. All right, decision making. These are awesome. I highly recommend you check them out and I highly recommend that you look at the teacher's guide. There are going to be some extra layers to this that you'll want to go and look at. All right, I'm going to scroll quickly because I know I want to keep this short. Um, the everyday life again, great connections for um, U.S. history and world history. The equal and civil rights videos. Yes, same with those. Um, exploring history. I like these for your lower level students because there are some good map practices and maybe even your regular level students, especially a lot of state tests have um, black and white maps and grayscale maps that they have on their tests. This gives you a lot of practice with those. So check out that uh, exploring history. Focus on world history is similar. Uh, framework for democracy. Awesome. And then the textbook for U.S. history is going to be Freedom, A History of Us. So check that out as well. Um, just scrolling down through. Great Documents is a wonderful series. Uh, History's Mysteries. These are crime scene investigations. The kids absolutely love those. Uh, the History Tunes are phenomenal as well. Um, history Unfolding is going to be uh, primary source activities. And then you'll just see there's there's just so many different things that you can pick from. So just kind of pick a series and explore it. These key decisions, these are great warm-ups. They're at a low reading level, so they're not really a big challenge. They only take about five minutes or so to complete. It's a great bell ringer or something to get started at the beginning of the class. There's the Latino heroes of the Civil War. We've got a mapping U.S. history and a mapping world history. I talked already about the mapping our world for geography. Well, guess what? The U.S. history, the mapping U.S. and mapping world are also phenomenal, um, great interactive activities for you. The milestones and diversity videos are great. National Center for History in the School, some real good um, high level uh, skill based activities focused on mostly U.S. history, I believe, with that one. Um, the primary source activities, another great source of short little bell ringers. And again, the Power Basics, I mentioned that one earlier, Power Basics are just really good for every course. They've got a lot of really good readings in there that are straight and to the point with some good activities that accompany those. So check those out. Um, 
going down through short texts in history. Those have a level one and a level two also. Those are really cool. The smart songs are phenomenal for U.S. history. Um, Story Path has got some good ones. Storytellers Histories. Those are great readings that are in a lower, you know, eighth grade, but even lower than eighth grade. They're written probably in like a fifth, sixth grade reading level. But Steve Shankin is the author and he is great, funny, um, just a, just kind of engages the kids in a little bit different tongue in cheek type of activities or readings. Um, to Tell the Truth plays, those are great as well. They're scripted. It's based on that uh, game show, To Tell the Truth, where three, you know, three different students are trying to be the same person. Turning Points in History, great videos. Unfinished Nation, again, good videos. Or I can't remember which ones I like better. I think I like the Turning Points one better, but I'm not 100% sure. Sure, the U.S. History Readers, these are awesome. Like most teachers that I find that teach U.S. History, when they get to these U.S. History Readers, like these are so cool. There's some really good questions that go with those, um, and they, they just pose some really thought-provoking types of things for your kids. Uh, we the People, again, that can definitely be used in U.S. History um, and then the Wonders of World Culture and the World History Activators. There's another Activators again. Uh, you guys know I love those, and so I just wanted to mention that those were there. All right, I have probably gone over my time that I should have gone for this video, so I'm going to stop it there. Thank you for joining me for part two, focusing on different types of activities you can find in Active Classroom based on your subject area. Thanks again so much for joining me, and have a wonderful day.